Hello and welcome to another video review. This is Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 for PC, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii, and Nintendo DS. This is a hack and slash action adventure game in the sequel to Star Wars The Force Unleashed. It was developed by LucasArts, Asper Media, and Redfly Studio, and was released in October of 2010. And it's kind of interesting, considering that there's considerably fewer platforms that this was released on. And so there wasn't quite as much variance in gameplay. There is a pretty big difference between the PS3, Xbox 360, and PC versions, and the Wii and DS versions, considering the wildly different control schemes on DS and Wii. But other than that, there's a lot of very, very common elements here. They certainly didn't have to spread the development out very, very thin like they did with the original game. So that, of course, begs the question, does that improve things? Does the game actually benefit from fewer platforms as a result? And more importantly, is it improvement over the original game? Because the original game did have potential, but it just didn't really go anywhere with it. So how does Force Unleashed 2 stack up? Well, as far as presentation goes, it was quite a bit of a step up over the original game, at least when you actually get into the in-game visuals. All the modeling is sharper, the texture work is better, the animations are smoother, more fluid, and more flashy. The rain effects are actually really nice in this game too. They've done a lot with shader work and it just pays off in dividends. And they've just thrown in a lot of really nice looking visuals. And so it really does help. Especially considering that this game has a fair amount more color than the original game did, which is always nice. And then there's the not-so-great part of the visuals, which is the cutscenes, the pre-rendered cutscenes, I should say, which are at a lower resolution than you're actually running the game at, so they look kind of stretched and sometimes blurry, and the lighting's a bit off in them, sometimes the visuals get a bit off on the timing. The lip-syncing in the cutscenes is really not very good either, and so that's a problem. But then you come to the sound design, which in the cutscenes is mostly fine. It just has some issues here and there with certain characters' voice acting. But most of the voice acting is actually rather good in this game. Sam Witwer returns as Starkiller, so he actually does a really good job at this. He did a really good job in the original game, too, I have to admit. But he did what he could with what he had, basically. Let's put it that way. And... The rest of the cast does a pretty decent job overall. And then the sound effects definitely feel like Star Wars. They've done a phenomenal job with those. And the music is, of course, the Star Wars music you come to expect. And that all works rather well. Although, again, it is more intense than you're used to with Star Wars. So the intense action and the Star Wars music don't exactly match up. And... Despite that being slightly annoying, it's not really that big of an issue because, let's face it, the Star Wars music is utterly fantastic. But obviously what really matter here are the story and the gameplay, and the story in this takes place sometime after the events of The Force Unleashed. And you actually don't play as Starkiller in this one, you play as a clone of Starkiller. And so that raises questions in and of itself just with the fact that they managed to somehow clone a Jedi and have the Jedi powers actually go to the clone and have the memories go to the clone. It's a mess. And the entire plot is basically a Starkiller's clone trying to come to terms with his identity and it really just goes all over the place and feels like a really, really badly written fanfiction, even more so than the original game did. Which is funny, because right here on the box of the game, it says, Sequel to the award-winning story. I don't really know what awards it won, but they're just wrong. Because it really does feel like a really, really bad fanfiction, where they didn't actually think things through. Where they did succeed somewhat is actually giving the characters some emotion. And I think most of that is down to Sam Witwer's performance. The actual script is not very good, but his performance does elevate that somewhat. 
and the plot itself you lose interest in extremely quickly. So, what about the gameplay? Did they improve things over the Force Unleashed? Because it's the same general style of gameplay. You run around, you uh, slaughter stormtroopers by the hundreds, you, you fight boss monsters and boss robots and things like that. And it's all very, very familiar. You will find that there's still all the quick time events to actually finish off bosses, although you don't necessarily have to use them, except in certain cases. Uh, you have boss fights that are extremely underwhelming. In fact, they really, really played up the Gorog boss fight uh, in all the trailers leading up to the game. And the Gorog boss fight is just a horrid mess. It's incredibly tedious, and you lose interest in it within a few minutes of fighting this thing. Because you're literally just going through the same pattern over and over and over again. And then the rest of the gameplay kind of makes up for that to some degree. When you're just running around slaughtering hordes of stormtroopers and such, it's actually pretty satisfying. They actually did more with the lightsabers than just make them wiffle bats this time around. This time around you actually do sever limbs, you do uh, cut them apart and decapitate stormtroopers. They, they actually did a pretty decent job in throwing around lots of dismemberment this time around. So it doesn't always feel like you're just whacking people in the face with a stick or something. And you feel like you're swinging around lightsabers at least a bit more than you did in the original game. So let's face it, in the original game, it felt like you were swinging around a wiffle bat. So they've done a better job with that. This time you have dual lightsabers, and it doesn't really affect the gameplay at all. But it looks cooler. And you can actually swap out your lightsaber crystals in each individual lightsaber as opposed to just having to do both. So that's really the only major gameplay consequence. They removed the ability to have separate color crystals and power crystals. And instead made the color crystals also the power crystals. So for example, if you use the green lightsaber crystals, then you gain additional health. Whereas if you use the blue ones, then you uh, replenish your force energy with each strike. Things like that. And there's really only a couple that you'll probably want to be using. So you'll stick with those the entire game. You do find them in the holocrons scattered throughout the levels as well. And those are pretty much the same as they used to be. The difference is that they've uh, added in some blue and... Uh, green Bacta tanks, and those increase your health and your force energy. Green for your health and blue for your force energy, of course. And so that's how you actually improve that this time around. You don't really level up. You just gain force points as you slaughter everything and destroy the environment and things like that. And then you spend those points to upgrade your powers. Now, one thing they did a bit better than the original game is that they give you access to most of your powers right off the bat, as opposed to having to go through the game for a couple of levels to finally unlock them. They give you most of them within level one, basically. And so, right off the bat, you're starting to get that power fantasy going, and they've done a better job with the pacing of that. At the same time, it also makes the game a lot more tedious. Because you're fighting the same enemies over and over and over again until you get later in the game and then you're fighting a bit more complex enemies but you're having to use the same techniques over and over and over again so it just becomes very repetitive and it becomes repetitive more quickly because it gives you access to everything right off the bat or at least most everything right off the bat and upgrading your powers doesn't really change all that much it does improve them, and you do get a bit more of a, a uh, fun use out of things like uh, using force grip to actually pick up multiple objects and fling them as opposed to just flinging one object at a time. But that said, it wears thin fairly quickly. Particularly when you still have control issues like you did in the original game, where the camera doesn't always work all that well. Uh, your character moves better, but the camera doesn't really catch up as well. 
So, you still have the camera issues from the original game, but the movement is smoother in the new one. It's kind of weird. They did mitigate some of the camera issues. It is a little bit better, but not really enough that it makes a big difference. The controls don't always work as you expect them to either, particularly when you're trying to grip things and throw them. More often than not, I actually found that it wouldn't throw objects. And I wasn't entirely sure why. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. And I had that problem with the original game too, but I had it worse in this one. Again, I'm not entirely sure what was going on with that, but it was kind of annoying. And then there's the PC version issues. So, first things first, it's locked at 30 frames per second. Just don't ever do that in any game, ever. Second thing, I had horrible technical issues with this game. To the point where I actually outright had to delete all the cutscene files because every single time it would play a cutscene, it would crash the game. It was horrible. And so I deleted all the cutscenes and suddenly the game worked perfectly fine. It runs fine, it plays fine, the controls mostly work except for the force grip. I just don't understand what it was with the cutscenes that were screwing it up. And I just don't understand it. I patched it and everything, and it still did that, so I just had to delete all the cutscenes. Luckily, you can look up the cutscenes, but let's face it, if you're hyping your game up as being pretty story-driven, then you want to make sure your cutscenes don't crash the game. Now, obviously, you're not going to have that problem on console, but... On PC, it's an issue, at least with me. Most people don't seem to have that problem. I seem to have this wonderful knack for discovering the most horrible bugs and glitches imaginable. So, it must be something on my end that's screwed up. I have no clue what it is, though, because this is literally the only game I've ever played that does this. So, it may just be a faulty copy of the game. I really don't know. That said, the game itself plays fine. And there's no really glaring issues with the PC version this time around. You can have full options and everything. So, they did learn from some mistakes, at least. When you actually get into this game, you do feel like the gameplay is a bit better. They did learn from that, in particular. But the story is just so much worse, and it's such a short game that you don't really care. In fact, the game ends up feeling worse because of this. There's just so many more moments in this game where you just want to give up entirely because it's just frustrating as hell. And that really didn't happen all that much in the original game. The original game was just fairly mediocre at best. And you could play through it and it was... Eh. But this time around, you actually kind of develop a hostile feel to the game. It's not a horrible game. But, in the long run, it's not really an improvement over the original. In some ways it is, but overall, it's more of a regression than anything else. That said, let's be fair here. The game is not terrible as a game. As a Star Wars game, it's pretty awful. And the PC version has a lot to be desired. But, I've played far worse. Let's put it that way. Even then... I really don't recommend playing it at all. I give it a 2 out of 5. Thanks for watching.